Chef David Payne here with Charbroil, talking about the new Charbroil Pinch of Sizzle line of marinades, brines, rubs, and sauces. Today we're going to talk about working with our all-purpose Charbroil seasoning, and we're going to work on some basic techniques on how to work on grilling steaks on our Quantum Charbroil Infrared Grill. Let's go ahead and head over to the grill and get started. All right, here we are back in the backyard on our Infrared Charbroil Grill. We went ahead and preheated the grill for about 10 minutes on high. Again, when searing steaks, you definitely want to do it at a very, very high temperature. You want to seal those juices in on both sides, and then we're going to reduce our heat to a medium to finish our steaks off to the proper temperature. In the world of steaks, I personally am going to recommend a medium rare steak, which is pulling your steak off at about 130 to 135 in temperature. That'll come up about another five degrees or so before you serve it to your guests. But uh, do keep in mind if you go more well done or medium well done that your steak will dry up on you a little bit. It won't be as juicy. It'll also toughen up on you a little bit. So if you're using a good cut of beef, please feel free not to overcook it. Again, personal preference, but my recommendations are going to be medium rare. Let's go ahead and open up our grill. But before we do that, I'm sorry, excuse me, let's go ahead and season up our steaks. This is our char broil, all purpose seasoning. Excellent for steaks, burgers, chops, any of the above. It's a seasoning blend of onion and garlic, salt, pepper, rosemary, a little bit of anise, and some dry mustard. Makes for a wonderful seasoning. A couple secrets in there too we can't tell you about, but uh, I think you'll find this to be an excellent seasoning for any of your steaks or chops. We got our grill on high here. We're going to go ahead and sear off our steaks. Again, I like to put them on the grill at roughly 10 o'clock on a clock. If you're looking at a clock, we'd go at 10 o'clock with the understanding we want to go 45 degrees when we make our marks on our steaks. So we'd probably end up at about 2 o'clock. So you always want to keep in mind when you're doing steaks, everybody likes a nice grill mark on there. This grill is excellent for doing that. This infrared, because of the temperature and the heat it gets up to, does a great job of searing your steaks. Let's go ahead and let that go for about two minutes. After such time, we'll go ahead and turn it just to sear the juices in on the other side. And then as I had told you, we'll go ahead and bring the temperature down to about a medium and then we'll finish the steaks off to the desired temperature. Okay, we're coming back to take a look at our steaks now. They should be seared on our first side. We're gonna go ahead and flip our steak. Make sure we get a nice sear on the other side. Again, just for about a minute or two, just enough to kind of sear those juices in. We don't wanna get it too well done at this point. We're strictly trying to sear the juices in. We'll go ahead and get it to it done this after we bring the temperature down to medium. At this point, I still have the grill on high. Let's go ahead and check our steaks. I think we got a good sear on both sides. As I had mentioned, I currently have the steak turned at two o'clock. What I'm trying to do is make some nice sear marks. So I'm gonna go from two o'clock or from 10 o'clock, excuse me, to two o'clock so that we can make some real nice sear marks on the steak, which is what we're trying to do. You can see we're getting some nice color. These steaks right now are probably at about a rare. We're gonna take this up to about a medium rare, which is more desirable by the masses. Most people really do like their steaks from around medium rare. All right, let's go ahead and give our steaks their next turn. See how our marks turned out. We've got some real nice sear marks. We're getting up to that medium rare, it looks like. There's a lot of ways to check doneness. We can talk more about that on another occasion. At this point, we're just going to take them to a nice medium wear, which is probably going to be about another minute or two. All right, let's take a look at our steaks. We should be just about done. All right, steaks look beautiful. Let's go ahead and pull those. As I had mentioned earlier, we do want to let these set and rest for probably about five minutes, three to four, five minutes at the most, because it's not a very thick cut of meat. The thicker your cut of meat and the more dense the piece of meat, like if you're doing a roast or something, you're probably going to want to let that meat less, rest longer. With something as thin as a steak, such as we have here, you're only going to let it rest for about three to four minutes. Let's see how good we are. That's a perfect medium rare. It's exactly what you're looking for. You see the juices flowing out of the meat. That's a good steak in my book. Highly recommend a nice medium New York strip with the Charbroil all-purpose steak soup.